Hey, how's it going everyone? So we're going to start off a new series and this time we're diving into the world of Linux and the command line. Now for those of you guys that don't know, Linux is a free and open source operating system that powers everything from supercomputers to your smartwatches to your smartphones and so on. And the command line is the way we interact with and control the Linux systems. Now I know some of you guys may be thinking that why do I need to learn terminal or command line? when you can just directly work with graphical user interface on your Mac OS or your Linux or Windows operating system. But trust me, learning the command line is one of the most fundamental skills required in the software industry. Now, there are many advantages to learning command line. The first work being the efficiency. So the command line allows you to perform tasks quickly and efficiently by simply typing in the commands. That means you can get more done in less amount of time. Now this may not seem like it in the beginning, but as you start to get comfortable with the command line, you will be able to do things much faster, such as navigating through your directories, copying and moving files, deleting files, or even doing things in batch processing, such as moving multiple files together or editing multiple files together. So the next we have is the automation. So with command line, you can automate many repetitive tasks. So this is a real time saver and can help you focus more on the important things so some of the common examples of doing this repetitive task would be such as backing up your files automatically, renaming multiple files together, or scheduling certain amount of tasks using some kind of cron job. And there's endless possibilities available over here. All of this can be done quite easily using command line. Now moving on to some of the advanced features which are only available or possible to do using command line, which can give you more access or more control over your system. So that means you'll be able to do things which you wouldn't be able to do otherwise using a graphical user interface. So some examples with that would be, let's say, running your shell scripts or managing servers and so on. On top of that, command line is really flexible and it's versatile, so it can be used on different operating systems such as your Linux, Mac OS and Windows. So regardless of the platform that you're using, the command line will always come in handy. The syntax might be different, let's say, in Windows versus Mac OS or Linux, but overall, the concept is still going to remain the same. Now, lastly, that is one of the most important thing, which is command line skills are highly in demand. It is the core fundamental skills that is required in any software industry that you're going to get into. Whether you want to get into, let's say, data science, you want to become a software developer, you want to become a test engineer, all of these jobs would require to know some kind of command line skills. So learning the command line is going to open up vast amount of job opportunities for you. So this is a great skill to have in your toolkit. So in short, the command line can help you work more efficiently. You can automate tasks, you can access some advanced features, and at the same time, it's going to open up many job opportunities for you. So in this series, I'll be covering all the common commands that you're going to be using on a day to day basis. So let's say even if you have been in the IT industry for a while and you're only familiar with a few basic commands, don't worry, by the end of this course, you're going to be a pro in using Linux command line. Now, before we jump directly into learning commands, it's important to know a little bit of the history of the operating systems. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I have a really interesting chart pulled up over here. So this one basically shows you the timeline and the family tree of all the operating systems created so far. So if I just scroll down, you're going to see all of these operating systems right here emerge from this one single operating system, which is Unix right here. Now, Unix was developed in late 1960s by at and Bell Labs, and it is considered the grandfather of all the modern operating systems. So it was basically designed to be multi-user as well as multi-platform or multitasking system that can be used on variety of hardware. So all of these operating systems right here, including Mac OS, as you can see right here, which is Mac OS or iOS from Apple, are all part of the same tree, which is coming from here. So it's pretty much part of the same family tree. So since Unix was a proprietary system, there were many open source OS that came out afterwards. And some of the popular ones are Linux and BSD. So if I just scroll down right over here, you're going to see, see this one is in red, which is all part of Unix. I'm going to scroll down again. And right here, you can see we get the same red background. And this one is actually Linux right over here. And I can zoom in a little bit so that you can see. So this one is basically Linux. And within Linux, you can see all the other ones as well, such as your Ubuntu, you have your, let's say, Fedora, Red Hat, and all of these stuffs are you're probably familiar with already. So these are all part of Linux operating system. So there were many Unix-like operating system came out, but Linux in particular has become one of the most popular and widely used operating system in the world. So the reason being is it's open source, which means anyone can go ahead and access it and modify, let's say, their source code and make some changes to it accordingly. And as I mentioned before, it's used in pretty much from all servers to supercomputers to your smartphones and smart TVs and so on. Now, aside from Unix or Unix likes operating system, we have another operating system which you are already familiar with, and that is Windows. So Windows was first introduced in 1985 by Microsoft 
and was part of as a graphical operating system which was used for personal computers. And obviously it has since evolved into many different versions. You have Windows NT originally, then Windows 2000, XP, 7, 8, 10 and now 11 as well. So you're going to see all of those different versions over here. It's going to show up. And at the same time, you can see other operating systems as well, such as for Xbox, Windows Phone and so on. So these two are primarily the main operating system. The first one is your Windows and second one is Unix or Unix-like. So in Unix, you're going to have, let's say, Mac OS operating systems. And in Unix-like, you're going to have Linux and BSD operating systems. Now, when it comes to OS compatibility or in general, the command compatibility, since Unix-like operating systems such as your Linux and Mac OS are based on the same family tree, so the commands that will work in the other will most likely will work on the other as well. So you don't have to worry about learning the command line differently for Mac OS versus learning it differently for your, let's say, Linux operating systems. So for example, over here, I was trying to run a command on Mac OS, which is ls, which will simply go ahead and list out all your files and directory. When I run the same command in Ubuntu OS as well, which is part of Linux, it's also going ahead and actually printing out the same details for me. So you can see hello JPEG as well as the sample.txt. So the same command works for both Ubuntu as well as on Mac OS. And again, going back to the same thing, because they're part of the same family tree, most of the commands are going to work in one as well as the other as well. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to go ahead and start diving into command line. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like to support my work, please consider subscribing to my channel as well as giving this video a like. And if you're looking to get started in your SDET career, be sure to check out SDET Unicorns Academy, where you will have access to all the courses that I have created so far, plus get direct support from me whenever you get stuck during a learning experience. Thanks again for watching. I will see you all in the next one.